I probably wouldn't have even have tried Linux had I not seen it in a box set for sale over at CompUSA you know, back in the year 2000. 20 years, God, is that 20 years ago? No, 10 years ago. I like, God, I'm getting old. Um, I don't want to get old. Um, you know, I mean, half the battle's knowing these fucking things exist. Well, we're already out of that. And if you want to buy your computer with Ubuntu pre-installed, the only choice you have, um, it's still hard to find those offerings on those different web pages. You can't find the seat. So you just wonder, did Linux just, did it just disappear? No, it didn't. And they're trying to make a push to the desktop. Even if you remember Linux, you might have even forget. Out of sight, out of mind, it's gone. Who knows? You know, FreeBSD, you might hear about now, word of mouth. NetBSD, if you heard of FreeBSD. Linux, you might hear word, you might hear word of mouth. But news, new users aren't really going to start coming into the fold unless we're more and more out there. And then to get out there, of course, we have to be in a situation where people actually, when they install it, they can do what they want and, they, and they're not going to get lectures or have to go search the web to see how they're going to install Flash or, you know, or, or the, you know, just put the, put the drivers in there, man. Put them in, you know. So my, my, my take right now on Fedora is that it's not a desktop distribution. There's really no reason to have it as a desktop distribution. Um... There's no reason to install it on any computer that has an Intel card, an NVIDIA card in it at all. So you're cutting out a you're cutting out a lot of the market, a huge, a huge portion of the market, or ATI drivers. They, they seem to work enough here, but who knows there was some guy complaining about he, he had an ATA card and he tried to up to upgrade his fedora and couldn't get a couldn't get a graphical user interface login okay well snooker <laughs> fedora's out of there and let's let's take a look at the top 5 distributions that we have and the only ones that are going to have any chance whatsoever to have any adoption or they're worth installing for the end user to not, this is all about what are the chances of this thing working when I stick it in? This is what I'm talking about. It's worthwhile. Is it worthwhile to stick a Fedora disk in my computer? There's a 67% chance, maybe. I don't, know, I don't know the numbers for Intel and NVIDIA cards, but, or, or, or ATI cards, um, but. You know, and they don't they don't admit to ETI not working, so let's cut that down. But whatever that percentage is, that's the chances that's the percent chance it's not worth you using if you don't know anything about the hardware in your computer. Well, let's just say that's twenty percent. Well, who wants to mess around with a an operating system that has a twenty percent chance of failing on the install? No one. So let's go over our list of the top five distributions out there. We have. Uh, Fedora, which used to be Red Hat, that um, you don't know if you're even going to get a GUI when you install it. The upgrade is painful and risky. Um, so you're, you're out. <laughs> it's not even worth considering. If, it, if I was going to, if I had to choose which distribution to deploy on this network where I have Maybe I only have 10 desks to administrate, which is not a lot, but I also have to do my accounting job. Um, w with Windows, even though I had a very difficult time just getting my, my hands on the version of the software we were allowed and I had to do installs twice, you know, um, that might take two to three days to set up each desk at most. So maybe a month of my time is gone just putting Windows on there, but that's going to last at least five years. 
when you take um, a Linux distribution with an X window not working, or various things that break on, on upgrades that come out every six months, I can't afford um, a day or two each desk to get them working every six months. 20 days every second, you know, I might as well just, I might as well have a job, my only job would be to install Linux, <laughs> work on taxes for two, week and two weeks and get back to Linux, I mean, you know, I mean, it would take me a month to get them all set up, then I have, oh, sorry, a month to get them all set up, five months to do tax work, and then another month to set them all up, five months to do tax, it's just not feasible, if the in-place upgrade doesn't work, so, okay, so, Scratch Red Hat right off the list. Fedora, gone. You're, 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 I'm not even considering it. Mandriva. Yes, it'll start the update, but the install will break. And then... The best of all my bad choices for desktop interfaces, which includes KDE4, that it comes with, that's a choice I don't like. It's a bad choice, but it's the best of the bad will break on a simple upgrade. Scratch Fedora. If I can't rely on if I can't rely on doing an update and having it last a simple update, not an upgrade, scratch you're off the list. They're gone. That's two of five, that's forty percent. Okay, the SUSE won't even install. That's sixty percent now. If we give them all an even distribution, I think Ubuntu is higher up there on on the on the scale. So now we're down to Linux Mint and Ubuntu. And while Linux Mint is probably gonna surefire install in your system because it has the proprietary drivers in there, Linux Mint is a bit out of sync with with Ubuntu who they get their software from. And so even though I was able to upgrade my version of Linux Mint from within Linux Mint, it was a little bit painful. I was able to come up with my skill level but it could take some people out and that little bit of extra time to get it to upgrade is not not really optimal uh, once you figure out what it is yeah it, it could slim things down but it won't be as fast you know, Ubuntu it just, it, it's just at least so far it's just been you know some other guy says every time he upgrades in Ubuntu something breaks for him but at least for me so far when I've done the Ubuntu upgrade I've um merely been able to continue on without any issue. Um, these are both on HP machines. That's the HP Elite 7100 MT and the other machine is like a HP D220 or a HP 1200 MT which looks like the D220. They both originally came with Mandrake Linux ship with them. Um, so now, now, really, my only choice, if I want to use Linux, my only choice really is Ubuntu. Or Mint. But I found that since I haven't had any real driver problems with Ubuntu, and Mint seems to behave the same, why use, for me, why use Mint? Because the Ubuntu, I know the Ubuntu upgrades, at least for me so far, are going to go smoothly. And that's quite a feat to accomplish, I'll tell you that, with all these different dependencies that are out there. But Ubuntu has other weaknesses that SUSE didn't before. And I did, an, one time I did an upgrade in SUSE 7 or something like that, like maybe 7.2 to 7.3, I think. And I had some issues with, well, my desktop isn't, there's certain things I used to be able to do that I really had to work to get through to work again on this newer version of, you know. Um, I did have to mess with uh, getting the video drivers installed on one Dell machine. I forgot about that. But I was able to use their their uh, their YAS tool, which Ubuntu is completely absent of, to uh, get the graphical user interface to work on, a, on an older Dell model on the Optiplex, right over, right over there. Um, 
but I've never had entire big pieces of breakage when I used SUSE before it went open. So that would be my first choice over Ubuntu. If something worked and behaved like SUSE 7.3 but had updated software in it, I'd be happy with it. Which brings me back to the idea that maybe um, if I can get it to install, maybe I should use SUSE 8 or 9 and uh, install package source in there and a new ver you know, and then just manage my software that way. Um, that's pretty time consuming too, right? So, I mean, you know, you, you compile KDE, God, it takes forever. But once it's compiled, then I can distribute it to the other machines, but it's a little more manual. It doesn't just show up. I have to create a repository. I have to do all sorts of things. So, um, and the kernel will be old, probably a 2.4 and not a 2.6 version, I bet. You know, so that's my catch 22. Ubuntu I could live with, but there still are some odd quirks uh, with using KDE 3 in there. And let's see, is this still going nowhere? It's still going nowhere. So now uh, the, you can't you can't even update Fedora, <laughs> and there's no explanation for it. I'm sure I could dig through the log files, come up and find some cryptic message, go out search for it, and I could spend the rest of the day. Finally, at the end of the day, I'll be able to do my fucking update, and I'm not going to do it. That's the end of Fedora right there. And I'm done with Fedora. Um, it's not even worth doing much more with. Okay, yeah, I'm able to play my videos in here. I probably can install Wine, but Wine best any time in a system that I'm just going to have to wipe anyway. Another thing that I really didn't like about Fedora is that they just got this holier-than-thou attitude. I already had my partition formatted in the riser format. I like I like the riser format. Don't necessarily like what Riser. I don't like what Hans Riser, uh, you know, how he killed his wife. But I like the Riser format, and I found it's worked better for me than any other, especially any EXT uh, file. S I, I found with the EXT file system, you're having to do a file system check on that far too often. Riser, I've never, I, you know, I just keep going and going and going. And it's just fine. Works smoothly, no problems. It's like AXT3 to me has acted like the bastard cousin of Riser. But um, Fedora won't let you keep your Riser partition and won't install on it, even though I know it's capable of it. They're, they're just too philosophical, so it's not going to work for me. I'm going to stop there, upload these videos, and I'm not going to mess with it anymore.